Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into something super exciting, setting up Unraid for the very first time. Whether you're looking to build your dream media server, a reliable backup solution, or just need a solid setup to store all your files, Unraid is an awesome choice. In this video, I'll walk you through the entire process, from installation to getting it set up and running, so you can hit the ground running with your new setup. So grab a coffee, sit back, and let's get started on turning that old hardware into your new powerhouse server. Let's go. All right, so the first thing we're going to have to do is head over to unraid.net and we're gonna click on free trial. And then we're going to download the USB creator tool for whichever platform that you are going to use. And for reference, I have a Mac, which I'm going to show you right now how that works. So after downloading and installing the uh, USB creator tool, you're going to run it. And this is what it looks like. So you'll insert the USB drive and then you'll open the Unraid USB creator. And then from there, you're going to select your operating system, which will be the recommended. And then you're going to pick your storage media and then next. Uh, highly suggested that you set a server name so that it makes it easier to find on the network and you do have the option to set your uh, static IP address as well. So this is going to write and it's fairly quick. Let's jump ahead here. And that's pretty much it. So if you are going to be running Unraid on um, equipment that does not uh, have uh, UFI, uh, you're going to go and open the USB drive and you're going to double click on the make bootable. Uh, from there, you're going to not permit UFI boot mode enter your administrator credentials for your computer, and then it's going to go ahead and make this drive bootable for a legacy system. All right, so now that that's done, uh, you'll wanna get that inserted into your server that you're building or have built or repurposing. And you're gonna make sure that your USB drive is the boot drive for your system. Unraid does not install on a hard drive or NVMe drive or SSD. Uh, Unraid lives on a USB drive. When the server is booted, Unraid actually dumps that whole operating system file from the USB drive over to the system's RAM. And that's where the system will actually run. It'll run out of your RAM, which gives it uh, quite a bit of responsiveness. So now that you've gotten the system booted, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find its IP address if you did not set a static one. So I run a Unify network. So for me, it was just a matter of opening up Unify, finding the name that I set, and here I have the IP address. So this is what will open when you put in your uh, IP address for your new server. It's gonna have the root filled in as the username as default. And from there, you're gonna set a password. And then now uh, you're either going to start a 30 day trial, uh, purchase a key if you so desire, or redeem an activation code that you could have gotten from a promotion, uh, or you can recover your key. So I'm actually gonna recover key. And this is the, uh, the, the key that was already on this system. So I'm just gonna recover. I'm gonna copy this, go to my registration. And I'm just going to paste in that URL and click install. And that's it. Um, 
because this is a demo system and uh, I've already had this key installed, uh, I recovered my key, but what you'd want to do is uh, start a 30-day trial and then um, uh, click confirm and it'll, it'll ask you to create a, uh, an Unraid.net US or uh, Unraid.net account. So we're going to get out of this and go back to our system. Okay, so now our trial key is installed and we see we have an expiration time here of 29 days, 20 hours, and 11 minutes. Okay, so after you get your license all set up, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is head to the main section. And here is where we need to start assigning our hard drives. So I'm just going to change the slot allotment down to eight. Um, so parity drives, uh, parity drives would be uh, what you'd want to use if you want uh, to have all your data backed up. Uh, you can run two parity drives and how parity drives work is you could have uh, one of these drives fail and the parity drive will sit there and it'll wait for you to install another drive to replace the drive that failed. And once it does that, it's gonna start repairing all the, the missing data um, that uh, failed with that uh, failed drive. Now, uh, parity doesn't always work. Um, it's never worked for me, so I just simply don't use it and I keep backups on a secondary server that I have on my network. So I'm not going to be setting up parity drives. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and start getting uh, these drives populated here. I'm actually not going to use that four terabyte one. I'm going to use a two terabyte and the two one terabytes. And then I'm actually going to add a pool because I do have an NVMe cache drive. And then from there, I'm going to select my NVMe cache drive. Once you have all your drives set up, you're gonna then go down to the bottom and click start. So Unraid is mounting the drives, which it's done here and it is going to basically allow us to start accessing these drives. Now the great thing about Unraid is that uh, you can put uh, any type of drive or any size drive into the system and uh, it just makes it show up as one big drive. So in this case we've got uh, 3.99 terabytes and then uh, 250 gigs of cache space. So I'm actually going to go ahead here and just have a look at the cache here. No, we don't need to change anything in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the flash drive. And what I want to do is I want to set the default boot mode into Unraid GUI and then apply. And then the next thing I want to do is go over to settings and then disk settings. And I want to enable auto start. So if the server ever uh, restarts or there's a power failure and the the system reboots that the 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 storage array will come online automatically so now that we've got that set up the next thing we want to do is go over to our users and we want to create a user to start accessing uh, the server so bear in mind that users cannot access the administration page and administrators cannot access shares on the network. So you have to set uh, actual users for the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a user and password. And I don't wanna save that. And the next thing we're gonna do is create a share. So click add share. And just call this tester. And what I want to do is set this to write any files to the cache drive first. 
and then copy them over or move them over to the mechanical drives at night. And what that does is it allows me to have the best speed possible uh, because cache drives or the NVMe drives will always be faster than mechanical drives. So the next thing I need to do after creating this share is I need to export it so that it's visible on the network. Uh, I also want to make this share secure. So I'm going to remove it from public, which does not require any user or password to access it. And I'm going to change it to private. After I do that, I'm going to hit apply. After that's applied, we're now going to have the option to give uh, our network users access. So uh, I want to make this a read and write share. So as we can see, guests have no access. So now we need to access this. How are we going to do that? Well, let's head over to our to our uh, screen here and uh, we're going to open up. Oh, my bad, that's the wrong server. So we're going to browse and here we see BC Adventures. It's gonna open that up and tester. Oh, it's telling us we can't access it. Well, that's because we didn't put a username and password in. So we're gonna open that up again open up BC Adventures and we see we're connected as guest. We're going to go over here and connect as, put in our username and our password. And then we can remember the password in the keychain or not, but I'm not going to save it because this is just a demo. Then we're going to click OK and now we can see the folder. So if we open it up, we can see that there's zero items and 4.2 terabytes available four terabytes from the hard drives and 200 gigs from the cache. It does take into account the free space on the cache drive. So now we want to write to this. So let's create a new folder. And we have an untitled folder and we'll just call this USB creator. And then we'll open that up. And then let's copy the USB creator over. It uh, doesn't look like we have that anymore. It looks, I deleted it. Okay, so we're just going to drag and drop a copy of a file over. And that's it. It's now in the hard drive or on the server. So let's open Safari back up and head on over to apps. And uh, we want to install this Community Applications plugin. Uh, community Applications is a, uh, it's an app store essentially for Unraid um, uh, with applications that were built by third party uh, users. So uh, the Community Applications was built uh, by Unraid users for Unraid users. And there's a ton of functionality in here and uh, as well as plugins, which uh, I'm actually going to show you how to install right now. So one of the uh, first plugins that everyone should have installed is a file explorer. So we'll just search here for file. And then we're going to install the Dynamics File Manager. So all you do is you just click it and then click install. And that's literally it. We now have a file explorer built into our Unraid system. So if we go over here to shares and then to our tester, we now have access to uh, basically do anything we want with any of the files on our system. So if we open up the USB creator folder, we see the BC adventure. And if I open that up, we see the intro. So we can manage our files from within the Unraid administration dashboard. So if I click this and then delete and then start, well, now that's gone. So if we look back at our folder here, that file is now gone. And uh, just to give you an example, if I create another folder in here, and then we open back up Safari, we can, uh, well, I guess I have to refresh this. If I give this a refresh, we can see that untitled folder. 
Next, let's set up Docker. So let's head over to settings. And then we're gonna go to Docker. And one of the first things I like to do is disable Docker. Even after a fresh install, we're gonna disable. And then the next thing we're gonna do is delete the VDisk. Now we're gonna head over to shares and we're gonna actually open system and we're gonna look in Docker and we're gonna make sure that's empty, which it is. And the next thing we're going to look in is app data. Make sure that's empty, perfect. All right, now we're gonna make sure app data is strictly only writing to the cache drive. So let's open up app data and we're gonna change this to cache and apply. The reason we're doing that is that Docker containers and the environment that they live within is uh, stored uh, in your cache. Now, if you don't uh, make sure that your cache drive is set to an NVMe or SSD, uh, the performance on your Dockers is going to be uh, absolutely terrible. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our virtual machines are set to the cache drive as well. So you'll, you'll open domains and you'll change uh, the primary storage from array to cache if it's not already set to that. So now if we ever decide to run virtual machines, they're going to live on our NVMe or SSD drive and we aren't gonna have to worry about the slow speeds of a mechanical drive. So we're gonna head back to settings. We're gonna go back to Docker and we're gonna change the Docker VDisk size from 20 gigabytes to 40. The reason we're doing that is because I have found over the seven or eight years I have been using Unraid, 20 gigabytes is too small, and it's really easy to make an error when you are changing the size of your VDisk for um, your Docker. So I like to just get this out of the way first. Uh, doubling the size is uh, a really good way to future-proof um, any of the larger containers that you may download that uh, uh, require a lot of VDisk space. Um, I have yet to run out of any space on my personal server uh, after uh, changing it from 20 to 40 gigs. So uh, once that's done, we'll click yes to enable Docker and we'll apply that. And what's that, what that's doing is it's creating a virtual disk for the Docker image. So if we go over to Docker here now, we can see we don't have any Dockers. We will actually uh, set that up in the next video. So that pretty much sums it up. That is Unraid in a nutshell. It's super simple, super easy to use, very easy to get set up. Um, I have actually found this to be way more uh, simple to set up uh, over FreeNAS or TrueNAS. Um, one of the other um, one of the other uh, servers that I've really enjoyed working with was uh, QNAP. Um, however, um, I just found their hardware to be uh, a little overpriced and um, a little too locked down for my liking. So. Uh, Unraid is a great option. Um, I really hope that you found this tutorial uh, simple and uh, easy to use or follow. Um, please let me know if there are any suggestions for videos that you would like to see in the future or uh, any tips you have for making these videos better. Uh, I am still getting comfortable with the whole YouTube and being on camera thing and uh, I make a lot of mistakes. I uh, get anxious very easily and uh, I really hate seeing myself on camera. <laughs> so that's something that I'm, I'm working to get through. Um, and I say I'm a lot, which, which I, I recognize. Um, anyways, um, thanks for watching. Uh, give a like and subscribe if you found this useful. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.